Patient. Patience. Yeah. Patience. It's all about our patience. The Lord is faithful and just. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Our Father is so, so good to us. In this fast life, this day-to-day, fast-paced living, we want everything now. We need everything now, or we think we do, correct? We think that our Father needs to give us what we desire right now. It could be money, clothing, friendship. But the Lord wants to let us know that when we stay close to Him, when we stay within His Word and spend time with Him, we receive a spiritual blessing that nothing else in this planet, on this, on this earth, in this life could provide for us, which is a spiritual treasure of abundance. We're able to relax within the word of our God. We are able to know that we are enough and with Christ, we can do anything. We don't have to run after everyone else. We don't have to try to do what everyone else is doing, but we can rest in the promises of our Lord, knowing that he will accomplish what his word has said, that we are new within him, that we can do all things through the power of Christ. And that brings me to what I felt just, impressed on my heart today a word from the lord that he's saying to all of us really that our words hold truth and power our word has power the tongue boasts many things and it's small but there is much power in our speech what we say and what we do holds great influence So within any sphere we are given, God has given us the spirit of territory over certain things. We need to go to our Father in prayer and ask him to guide us. We shouldn't say that, oh, I don't believe I'm going to get this position. It's way above my experience. We don't need to say, I don't believe I'm going to be able to pass this course or this exam. I didn't completely comprehend all of that knowledge. And at times we may be right, but we need to be humble. And in all aspects, having humility might be very different than we first thought of it. We need to be humble in knowing that God can do anything for us and that we don't have the right to box ourselves in, to tell ourselves that we can't accomplish or do something because personally it's not within our strength. When it's in the strength of the Most High God whom we serve, we have a Savior to rely upon. We're not relying upon ourselves. And that shows true humility as well. Humility does not just lie in lying on a carpet, um, fasting for a hundred days, abstaining from not interacting with people, but it can be as simple as taking God at his word. We can show that we believe in the power of Christ to sanctify and purify our lives and give us the power of not only choice, but remembrance that we will be able to do that position because we're not relying on our own power, our own strength. We're relying upon God. So in the Bible, we can see in different stories that God gives them territory where man doesn't normally have territory. In several stories, Joshua in the battles of Israel and in various different compilations, you will remember that God gave normal men power. And this power was not accessed by 
strength of their own. It wasn't accessed by boasting. It was accessed by believing in the words of God, holding him as faithful and just and true, having faith in God. In one instance, God showed up for an army. He allowed the sun to stand still, if you can comprehend. He allowed the day to go a bit longer so that the army of the Lord would be able to win in battle. Try to find that in the Bible. He allowed the earth to stand still instead of continuing to rotate as it normally would so that the sun would elongate that day so that his word would be accomplished because a man believed in him. And you can look into the philosophical and scientific interests of it or what happened or how the Lord um, made that happen or how the Lord could have elongated the day and how this took place. But it comes back to simply having faith in God. Having faith that the Lord has given you the power of your presence, your speech over territory that you may not even know you have. So each of us are given power and it's how we use it. It's within our speech. The things we say really, really make an impact. We can either use our mouth for blessing or for cursing. We have that decision to make. We can either promote the peace, the love, and the power of Christ to another individual, or we can lower them and continuously fight against them, belittle them each and every day by the words we speak. Our words have power, and it's good to remember that because when our words really have power and we remember that, we can pass that on to our children. The words we speak can be life to them and health to them. They will grow and flourish when they're told, you can do this. You will be a blessing. You will accomplish what the Lord has said you will accomplish in your life. And I know that you are chosen by God to be a missionary for him in whatever capacity you want to work. Instead of stating, you know, I don't believe you can really do this. You do have developmental disabilities, as we were told. We want you to be safe. So let's Stay safe and focus on those areas where we know you can excel in. We know you can do this. We know you can do that. We don't want you to get your hopes up. You know, you, you weren't born as everyone else. And that's right. Your child may not have been born as any, everyone else. But your child can do what everyone else is doing or more than that if God is real and he is you at times don't even need to be able to speak and God will use you so to whoever I'm speaking with or to God can use you in your situation um, I do recall a story of great power the power of prayer and an individual, he was in Africa, and he was coming from America as a missionary. And he came upon two individuals fighting and having an argument. He in, broke up the fight, and he said, you know what, I, I'm going to help this young man. He's battered, he's bruised. He took his medicine. He bound up his wounds. He cared for him. And he went on his way. And that same missionary... He didn't hesitate to come right back into that village and to tell the love of Jesus to everyone he met. He spoke of God, his truth, and his word, and he told them of the power that Christ holds, the power of the tongue. And 
he met upon the same young man who had he had healed and brought back to life and really gave him sustenance by the medicines he gave him by binding up his wounds just as Christ did right he was a true missionary and this young man he when he saw him come back he said he well in his heart he welled up and he just said I have to tell you something minister when that day after you had bound up my wounds, you had went on your way. I and my friends, we followed you. We followed you into that jungle and you were not alone, sir. And when we followed you, we saw 26 armed men around you and we were terrified and we left. And the missionary laughed and <laughs> he said, I was by myself, you know? You could have approached me and talked to me. I would have given you all my love. I would have longed to reconnect with you. And the young man said, sir, we were not there to offer our thanks. We were there to kill you, to take your life. We know you carry medicines, you carry money with you along your journey, your missionary walk. And we were going to take that. And we were going to take your medicines and sell them. And when we saw those 26 men, we were very afraid and we left. And the missionary said, wow, you know, I, I can't believe this. I, I know I was alone in, in that jungle. I was all by myself. Young sir, I was all by myself. And the young man, he said, I was not drunk. My friends with me were not drinking. But we know that the power of God protected you that night. And while the missionary was proclaiming this story to his congregation, a man stood up in the congregation and he said, Sir, tell me about what time this happened. Tell me the exact day when this took place. And he gave him the information, the time and the date. And he said, at that very time, I was going to play golf. I was going to have a good time and enjoy my day. And God told me to pray for you. And I, as you know, I, I enjoy my game. I, for some reason, I stopped and I prayed. And I didn't just do that. I called 26 men from this very church where you're standing in and giving us the word right now to pray for you. We all met here in this church that you're standing in missionary and we prayed for you. We didn't know what was happening to you. I didn't know, but I, I for some reason felt the urge to pray and I called them and we prayed and God sent 26 angels to surround you that night. And as the missionary looked on the faces of the men. They were different, came from different backgrounds, but that that wasn't his concern. He saw 26 men who sent 26 armed angels to protect him. And he was amazed at the power of God, the power of the Lord to use our words, our utterances, and our prayers to provide and protect for our loved ones. And you have that power. I pray today that you will pray over your loved ones, that you will remember the power that you hold in the name of Jesus to guard and comfort those you come in contact with. Do not underestimate the power that you have. You don't know what God has granted within your sphere of influence. You may you may have power to hold back, to elongate the day, to proclaim peace, to end a war. You don't know. So I pray that you remember to go forward in faith. Remember to stand with God, for he has given you all power. And through any circumstance, any deviation, any temptation, any obstacle, you don't completely understand or know if you have power over it. So remember to be humble because God may most likely 
has given you power over that obstacle, but because you know that normally in this sphere of life, A plus B equals C, one plus two equals three, I don't have power to make it five. But if you have that little ounce of faith to just say, in my humility, I don't completely know what God has given me power over. So I am going to move forward in the name of Christ because he might have given me this sphere of power at this time to allow two plus three to equal seven so that I can provide for a multitude. As a young man who brought his five loaves and two fishes provided for a multitude, God can provide and multiply what you have. You don't know the sphere of power that God has provided for you today. It, it may be different from what he provided for you tomorrow. That's why every single day we need to pray and be in the spirit of Christ following his word and his voice because what God has for us today may not be the same as what he has for us tomorrow. Um, just as in Esther, what he had for her a few days ago wasn't what the same that he had for her in two weeks from the time where she lost her parents, the time where she was living with her um, uncle. She, she was most likely at peace. Her uncle gave her the spirit of the Lord, the power of his word. She was resting in that power, right? But she may not have thought at that time, I have influence to say a word and to have it protect my nation or my country to change times and laws. But yes, I have the power to pray that God will do that. And in a period of time, God gave her that sphere of influence and power. And Esther's story is a bit different because she was able to sort of see that she had that influence and power and she was able to know and then ask or say. But in our day and age, we may not know. We may not see that we have that spirit or that power, but we can still come to Christ and we can still ask him and believe that he will grant us our petition. Um, even in the many stories of the patriarchs in the word who they were childless, they did not have children, but they were able to find strength in the Lord. They were able to know that the Lord would take and watch over their inheritance and he would provide for them. There are also powers of, there are also stories of mothers who did not know that what would happen to their children, felt that their children had passed away. And this mother, she came to an apostle of Christ and she stated to him, I know that in you, in you dwells the living God. And he has given you strength and power because of your faith. I pray because of my faith that you would heal my son. And in that same moment, there child was healed. That's why we must always ask God, because at any time, God has given you that sphere, that sphere of power, influence, so that you can change a situation for your family member, your neighbor, your loved one. You are there to give life. You are there to give hope. You don't know what your silence may portray. But you do know that the power of your tongue can portray life. And it's our privilege to lift up the lives and revive the souls of those around us. And in this day and age, it is a life or death situation. You don't know what your loved one is going through. You don't know the pain or the hurt they may be going, um, having to deal with. It could be from work, it could be from school, um, just not seeing any change in their situation and you're the one influence that's going to stop them from 
literal death from taking their life, from um, giving their life to something that's not going to provide them with sustenance in the word of God. You have power to be their route of righteousness through the mercy of the Lord who has given you righteousness. Be their example, be their word of hope today in the midst of despair. And I want to read a few words here as well. So our Savior wants us to use the short time we have here to bless others, to bless those souls which are perishing, as I said before. As in any circumstance, we have to watch our words. So at times we take light jesting and pranking for, um, for a joke. But we have, when we notice how much power our words hold, we can stop that joking or that playing around because we know how the times we are living in. We know the struggle that each soul, or we might understand to a small degree the struggle that each soul has to go through. So we know how important it is for us to lift up each other because right now each day can be so hard with the pandemic at times lessening and then increasing, businesses closing. We don't know what our family members are really going through, if they have the resources to sustain themselves. You might see them living in a wonderful home, but you don't know if their mortgage is overdue. You don't know if they are paying for their mortgage, but they can't pay for their electricity or food. You don't know what anyone's going through, even despite how they look, how they appear. You don't know by looking at someone's appearance of whole and healthiness and oh, you're desiring to look like them, but they could be sick and going through cancer. So that's why we always need to pray. We need to remember the power that God has given us to be a condolence to those around us, to be a light, a strength, and a help. The Lord can work most effectually through those who are most sensible of their own insufficiency and who rely upon them, him, as their leader and source of strength. He will make them strong by uniting their weakness to his might and their lack of sufficiency to his wisdom. If they are ignorant in any article of understanding, God is all wise to give them insight, knowledge, and future foresight into what they need to know and understand. Ignorance is no excuse for error or sin when there is every opportunity to know the will of God. See, if a man is traveling in the wrong direction or the wrong place and he sees the guide roads that is leading him or will lead him in the right direction, our Lord holds us responsible. Use those guide roads that you see and know to lead you. God will hold us accountable to all the light that we have been given. As we use those guide roads, we can then lead others to the knowledge of redemption and his plan of eternal salvation. So again, going back, remember that God has given you power over a sphere that you may not realize, you may not even know of. See, in Genesis, we also ascertain that God has given us power within our speech. When he allowed the words that Adam spake to name the animals, it wasn't a light thing. It was God training us to know the words we speak give life and they give leadership, they give direction. The names of different animals, the naming of the plants, the naming of different things is within our sphere, within our power, right? The naming of the atmosphere God gave us within our power. And you might say, oh, these have already been named by other men. But what are some things in your life that you need to name right now, that you need to give a name to, 
that you need to say a word of blessing over right now to change the course of that instance over your job. You may have been called in five times by your employer saying that you're not doing a good job. Please pray over your life. Give life and meaning to different situations in your life. Give prayers over your children. Change the names that society has placed on you so that you can change the situation you're going through. And guess what? Situations don't miraculously, miraculously change at times. Yes, we all know that. But you can, you have, it's not just you can, you have power over how you react to those situations. And that power can speak volumes. In the word of the Lord, our Father says, Awake, awake, my children in Christ. Put on strength in the armor of the Lord, for your God is faithful and just. He will deliver you and he will not forsake you. He will redeem you from the hand of the enemy and he will give you strength. And I'm now going into Proverbs. The preparations of the heart are in men, and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. You don't know what God has given you power over again. God will lead you in ways of righteousness. Continue to dedicate your words to him, and as you speak, God will continue to use your words. He will meld with your words, his words of life. And you'll be surprised by what you allow to flow forth from you when you realize the power God has given to your speech. Commit your works unto the Lord and your thoughts shall be established. The Lord has made all things for himself, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone that's proud in heart is an abomination to God, but by his truth and mercy, Will he purge our iniquity? By the fear of the Lord, we can depart from evil. God has given us truth and life and hope in him. His power is forever and ever. And he will continue to deliver us from fear of the enemy. <laughs> the Lord says, wait on him in patience. For yet a little while, if you don't see me, I'm going to come and deliver you. And he is going to have the last word over death. And you will see the power of the words of our God when we are raised from death to eternal life. We need to wait on God. We need to wait on him. We need to be surrounded by his spirit of blessing. And remember that we are a royal priesthood fashioned after the similitude of a palace. Say these words with me to remember that God has given you power in your speech. Say these words with me. I am ordained of Christ for good works. Through the power of God, I will gain learning and strength to help my brother in his time of need, to help my sister in her time of need. I am precious in the sight of God, and he is going to provide for me. I pray that God will direct my steps, and I know he will lead me. My God has given me all power, and I pray and I know I will use that power to walk in his eternal righteousness.